11 Houston, we're really amazed at the quality of the picture up in the tunnel. It's uh, really superb, over. That is considering the amount of light up in there. Roger, we're about to open our hatch now. Right. Buzz Aldrin reporting that he's halfway into the uh, LEM. Uh, this view is inside the LEM cabin. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. Yes, that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. We see you waiting. Buzz Aldrin has apparently carried the camera end of the limb with him, uh, showing us uh, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins back in the CSM. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We're standing by to watch your start up on the PTC at any time. Uh, you can start off at uh, the Verb 49. Over. All right, we'll go. We're just finishing up the uh, probe and uh, about to close up the hatch here. We're going to be a couple minutes late, probably getting started in the PTC. Watch, no sweat, 11. We're standing by. Over. This is Apollo Control. That was Neil Armstrong reporting that they are now uh, reinstalling the probe and drogue, uh, which is uh, just about on the flight plan schedule. And uh, they reported that they would be uh, putting the spacecraft in a slow roll shortly to uh, maintain passive thermal control. In that mode, uh, the spacecraft rotates at a rate of about three revolutions per hour to maintain even heating. We have a precise time on that uh, sphere of influence change, the point at which the moon, for calculation purposes here in mission control, be uh, comes under the predominant influence, uh, the spacecraft comes, comes under the predominant influence of the moon's gravitational field. And we now calculate that that uh, event will occur at 61 hours, 39 minutes, 55 seconds ground elapsed time. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Uh, Mike, there's no weight required. We're rates are steady. You can uh, proceed on over. I'm doing it, Charlie. Right. The tunnels are all secure. The drug probe and hatch all back in. Right. Copy out. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We have some new additions to your alternate and contingency checklist. If you would break that out, over. Stand by. Okay, Houston, let us ready to copy. Hi, uh, Roger. 11, if you'll turn to page F slash 2 dash 2 2, over. Okay, I have F at F slash 2 dash 22. Roger, Neil. Under column L, that's column Lima, line 06. The new data is 00001. Line 07. The new data is 02134. Over. Okay, I have been F slash 2 dash 22, column Lima, item 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, item 7, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4. Uh, Roger, that's correct. Thank you much, Al. Eleven Houston, for your information, those two entries are an update to your Delta H that we are have already uplinked into the CMC. Over. All right, you thank you. Well, 
was I marking on, Charlie? About an 18-kilometer line or what? Uh, we Our update uh, puts you to the Delta H to 35 kilometers, Mike, over. Okay. Houston, we got some switch positions for you for the high gain, over. Okay, go ahead. Roger, Buzz, select Bravo, Omni, high gain track to manual, beam wide, over. Okay, Bravo, Omni, track manual and beam wide. Roger, and your high gain angles are minus five zero on the pitch, two seven zero on the yaw. Over. Okay, going there now. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We have some updates and some things we'd like to talk to you about if you aren't in the middle of your meal. If it's convenient, uh, any time for you, uh, we're ready with some updates. Over. Uh, what, uh, what are the updates going to apply to? Roger, we have a couple of changes on the the limb mission rules no go for uh, your no go card Neil one slight change on the uh, app dip uh, fuel uh, and temp pressure card and we have a change to the procedure for the secondary radiator leak check which is to be formed at, performed at 71 hours tomorrow and also some indications that uh, we have a couple of um, Landing site oblique stowed in the wrong place. Over. Okay, if uh, any of those in the flight plan, the secondary radiator, uh, for example? Uh, that's affirmative. The secondary radiator leak check uh, is called out in the flight plan at 7120. Uh, that procedure is uh, listed in your. Uh, Launch operations book. Uh, we on page uh, two dash nine L two dash nine. We'd like to change that procedure over. Okay. Uh, stand by. Just read it verbatim like you want it, and I'll copy it directly into the flight plan and not pull around with a checklist. Roger, that's fine. If you're ready to copy, stand by. Ready right to copy on the leak check. Roger. It's monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Step two is secondary glycol to radiator valve, normal for 30 seconds, then bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, if no decrease in the secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol to radiator valve to normal. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump AC1 or AC2. After three minutes, Verify 
glycol discharge secondary pressure 39 to 51 PSIG. Also verify secondary evap out temp has changed. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump off. Secondary glycol to radiator valve bypass. That ends the procedure, over. Okay, I read back. Monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Secondary glycol radiator valve normal for 30 seconds, then to bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol to radiator valve to normal. Secondary coolant loop pump, AC1 or 2. After three minutes, verify glycol secondary discharge pressure, 39 to 51 PSIG. Verify secondary evaporator outlet temp has changed. Secondary coolant loop pump off. Secondary glycol radiator valve to bypass. And what's the reason for the change, Johnny? Roger, Span is concerned that our present procedure shown in the checklist does not really flow a glycol through the radiator and it, they want to verify that we do not have a plugged secondary radiator over. Okay, do they have any uh, abnormal indications in that system so far? Negative. Uh, this is the procedure that uh, came up with. It's just a check, Mike. Uh, everything's looking uh, great to us. Over. Okay, fine. This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 9 minutes. Uh, Apollo 11 now 182,000 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity down to 3,072 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, very little conversation from the spacecraft in the past uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, at this time, the uh, flight plan calls for the crew to be uh, getting ready to begin their eat period. Uh, that would be followed by a nine-hour rest period. Uh, we have one change to the flight plan to pass along. The television transmission, which had been scheduled at 100 hours, 20 minutes to 100 hours, 50 minutes, uh, in the flight plan has been deleted. Uh, this transmission was to have occurred during the formation flying prior, prior to the uh, powered descent to the lunar surface. The uh, decision to delete the TV transmission from the flight plan was made uh, due to uh, a lack of available satellite channels to relay the signal from the tracking site at Madrid to Houston for conversion. The intermittent music that we're getting is apparently coming from the spacecraft. 
uh, a crew has on board portable tape recorders with uh, music on the tapes and as they store uh, their own comments on the tape the music is of course erased uh, and uh, apparently the music is uh, triggering the uh, Vox operated microphones and we're getting intermittent music down from the spacecraft Uh, 11 Houston, we're wondering who's on horns. Second, Houston. We just had a little music there. That was good. You can keep it coming down, 11. Okay. Because it's a special occasion today, uh, Houston, this is the third anniversary of Gemini 10. Roger. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Apollo Control. That uh, comment a moment ago about the 10th anniversary of, or about the 3rd anniversary of Gemini 10 came from uh, Mike Collins, who, uh, along with John Young, flew the Gemini 10 mission July 18 uh, through July 21, 1966. The uh, brief bit of music that we got from the spacecraft was coming to us from a distance of 182,000 uh, 190 nautical miles.
Houston, Apollo 11, uh, ready to copy your update. Roger, stand by. Okay, uh, Buzz, the first uh, item is that we have indications that your uh, landing site obliques are not in the proper position. Uh, if you will check, uh, we think that the intermediate scale landing site oblique is stowed in the CSM Lunar Landmark book. We think that the large scale landing site oblique is stowed in the back of the LIM Lunar Surface Map book. Over.
Okay, I've got that. Uh, AC bus A uh, for DOI and uh, both buses no go for uh, BDI on. That's affirmative up until high gate and you can stop at, uh, at the line it's under the column five minutes to low gate. Now the next line is under the GNC things, pick and roll GDAs. You can scratch that line completely over. Roger, got it. Okay, Buzz, last entry is down under RCS, and it's a typo error it, under the three, in the line three axis attitude control. If you proceed to the right at PDI plus five, you'll see one axis, and the line goes all the way to locate the touchdown. That's incorrect. The line should stop under five minutes to locate. Over. Okay, we're stopping that at uh, five minutes to locate. That's firm. That completes that card. Uh, the rest of the updates are uh, just really for your information. Uh, based on our 58-hour platform, a look at the platform, uh, we're in really good shape. Your uh, gyros uh, have uh, almost uh, no drift in them. Since the prior to the update, we were looking at X of a minus 2.24. Meru, Y of point, a plus point eight seven, Z of minus point one one. Uh, since the update, uh, which was based on the the fifty two hour P fifty two, I believe, we gave you uh, an X uh, drift of plus point seven nine, Yaw of plus one point zero six, Z of plus point zero two Meru. The 52-hour and the 57-hour uh, alignments were did not really give us enough time to uh, get a real good or completely valid uh, uh, update on the drift check. So we're real satisfied with the way the gyros are looking. The pippas are looking great also. We're in real good shape with those two. Over.
11, radio check. Roger, reading you five by, how many over? Okay, loud and clear. You cut out uh, when you were talking about the platform at uh, something about 52 hours. And, uh, after that, uh, we never heard you again. Uh, Roger, I guess we were changing antennas. Stand by. Uh, that's affirmative 11. We were swapping antennas on you down here. <clears throat> Basically, the word is we got a real good platform. Uh, very small uh, drift on the gyros and uh, very small uh, drift in the pip was over. Roger, thank you. And I'd like to have a few words of clarification, if you'll give them to me on the RCS reel, what that um, change essentially means. Uh, copy a uh, few words of clarification on the RCS. Uh, oh, Roger. Uh, the the update there, Neil, you're speaking of about the one axis down to uh, five minutes to low gate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that uh, rule means. Uh, uh, stand by. I'll make sure I got my story straight with control. Stand by. Eleven Houston on the RCS. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, if we lose control about one axis prior to low gate, we would recommend an abort. Uh, this would require a dis a loss of of two distinct jets, uh, which is not very probable. But that's what we're recommending. After low gate, we would uh, continue on. Uh, we would recommend that we continue on to attempt the landing over. You were cut out, over. Roger, did you say you had some updates for us in the lunar surface book, over? Negative. Uh, at this time, we do not have any updates for the lunar surface book. Uh, we wanted you to have it just in case, over. Roger, you were cut out that time. Roger, at the present time, we do not have any updates for you on the lunar surface book. We are thinking about some and kicking them around, but they're very minor changes, over. Eleven, Houston, did you copy that transmission? Houston, we swapped antennas on you again. Uh, I say again that we do not have any uh, lunar surface uh, update, book updates at this time. We're considering a few minor ones, 
but we're still kicking Miranda Moker over. Bravo 1100.
Houston 11, we have a crew status report for you. Roger, go ahead, 11. Okay, radiation, CDR 11009, CMP 10010, LMP 09011, no medication. Roger, 11, we copy for the uh, radiations. And we're considering, uh, this PC, PC looks sort of weird to us, so we're considering uh, stopping and starting over again. We'll be with you in a couple of minutes, over. Houston, would you give us a uh, LAM CM Delta T reading over? We switched the antennas on you again. Would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading over? Houston, over. Go ahead, Levin here. Roger. We switched antennas on you there a moment ago, Neil. Uh, would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading, over? It's less than point one. Roger. Roger, thank you, Mike. Uh, could you give us some help? Uh, this PTC is uh, strange. It's not like uh, anything we've seen before, and we're wondering if y'all have had any uh, events or any idea that could help us out, Owen. Uh, 
Uh, I didn't understand that. Say again? Uh, Roger, we're looking at a uh, sort of a funny looking PTC. Uh, we've already drifted out to uh, 70 degrees in pitch, and we're wondering if uh, you all have had any events or any such thing as that that could uh, uh, cause us to uh, pick up these rates to drive us off. Over. Uh, negative, Charlie. We don't know of anything. Roger. Unless it's got something to do with that entry from a uh, stop from the uh, position that we want to be in. I don't know. Uh, Roger, when we started off, it looked uh, real fine to us. Now it's uh, drifting off in a funny pattern that we haven't seen previously on a flight. Uh, we're just trying to figure out. Uh, I think we'll probably start it over again. We'll be with you momentarily. Over. Okay. Apollo 11, Houston, we hate to say it, but we'd like to terminate this PTC and start over again. We have no assurance that we're going to get it through the sleep period with this uh, uh, funny configuration or funny pattern. We'd like you to stop it uh, now and then uh, go back to pitch 090, yaw zero, and roll whatever you stop on over.
Roger. This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 57 minutes. Uh, a few moments ago, you heard Capcom Charlie Duke advise the crew to terminate the passive thermal control mode that uh, they are presently in and reestablish uh, the three revolution per hour roll rate about the spacecraft longitudinal axis that is used for uh, thermal control. We had noticed a... Uh, uh, unexplained deviation from the attitude that the spacecraft was set up in uh, in this roll mode ideally uh, it would roll about the uh, longitudinal axis with very little wobble and if uh, a wobble is uh, introduced for one reason or another uh, the reaction control system jets would come on uh, as soon as the motion out of the uh, prescribed plane had uh, occurred, had gone beyond uh, prescribed limits, in this case 30 degrees, uh, to correct. Uh, the jet firing is on past missions uh, do tend to disturb the crew's sleep rather than have the uh, reaction control system jets come on during the night and uh, perhaps have to awaken the crew to reestablish the passive thermal control mode at that time. Uh, we elected to correct it now. Men, you disable Bravo and Charlie. Select Quad Alpha and Delta. Over.
this is Apollo Control. We're getting quite a bit of noise on the air-to-ground circuit at this time as the spacecraft uh, rotates from one on the antenna around to the next, and we momentarily uh, lose lock-on. Uh, at this time, Apollo 11 is 183,544 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, the velocity uh, holding fairly constant now at about 3,000. 42 feet per second. It's been uh, moving down toward 3,000 feet per second and seems to be leveling off uh, somewhat. This is Apollo Control. We're going to take the air-to-ground circuit down temporarily until uh, a stronger antenna lock is a... Here's a call to the crew. We'll stand by for that. This is Apollo Control. We will take the air-to-ground circuit down at this time until we have re-established sufficient signal strength to uh, eliminate the noise on the circuit. This is Apollo Control at uh, 60 hours, 10 minutes. We've uh, re-established good antenna lock-on at this time, and uh, we'll continue to uh, monitor for any conversation from the spacecraft. The crew is presently uh, re-establishing the passive thermal control uh, rotation rate of three revolutions per hour. Uh, following that, we expect they will uh, begin their rest period at the present time, Apollo 11 is 183,821 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity 3,037 feet per second. Hello, Apollo 11. Hello, Apollo 11. Over. <laughs> Raj, bringing you about one by. Looks like we picked a super attitude here for PTC stabilization. Uh, we're reading you in uh, a backup voice now, over. Can we read you loud? Raj. Uh, 
Uh, I think we've got the, about the best configuration. Uh, we have been doing it off from the ground here. 11, uh, we'll just keep it as it is, over. Houston, would you select Command Reset and Omni Alpha? Over.
Apollo 11, Houston, we is stable. You can start the PTC, over. Well, that's right. Houston Apollo 11 on checklist page F9-7. I've uh, completed step 8, and uh, I'd like to know what you think is ideal timing between step 8 and step 9 and step 10 on that page, over. Roger, stand by.
Apollo 11, Houston. We don't see any time constraint. We'd like you to go ahead and set up the wide dead band, then go through step 10 and 11. Over. Okay, we'll do. I don't see any constraints either, Charlie. I just was checking to uh, make sure because last time I went from 8 to 9 to 10 to 11 a little bit more swiftly than I'd been doing in the past. Roger. Roger, we copy. Apollo 11, Houston, would you please select Omni Bravo, over. Roger, Bravo. Roger, reading you five by. Same here. Apollo 11, Houston. It looks like we got a good PTC going. It's good night from the white team. Over. Okay, see you tomorrow. Thank you for everything. This is Apollo Control at 60 hours, 37 minutes. We said goodbye or good night to the crew about uh, 10 minutes ago. We expect that they will be settling down for their rest period shortly. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 184,600 nautical miles from Earth. The spacecraft velocity is presently 3,023 feet per second. We understand there's been some interest in a comment made by Neil Armstrong during the uh, television transmission about the EVA floodlight. Uh, Armstrong's remark was that the mast, uh, which the light is mounted on, appeared charred. Uh, he reported that uh, the light works, but uh, had apparently the mast that uh, supported it had apparently been damaged during the launch phase. Uh, this light would uh, be used in the event of a uh, contingency EVA. It would have no function uh, in a normal mission, such as we're presently flying. And uh, in the event that a, an extravehicular activity was necessary for transfer of the crew from the LEM to the uh, command and service module, the light would be an aid in uh, providing exterior lighting of the handrails, uh, but uh, would repeat that it would have no function uh, in a normal mission. And uh, the charring, which Armstrong reported, is not considered significant at this time. Uh, we don't expect to have any further conversation with the crew. Uh, we will continue uh, uh, to record any, uh, any remarks that we get and uh, play those back. 
the uh, passive thermal control mode, which was re-established, appears to be uh, functioning well at this time, and all spacecraft systems are functioning normally. At uh, 100, or rather at 60 hours, 39 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 60 hours, 47 minutes. Uh, we just got a call from the spacecraft uh, requesting that we give them the position of the S-4B res in respect to uh, the spacecraft. And we're currently coming up with that bit of information, so we'll stand by. Apollo 11, Houston, the S-4B is about 6,000 nautical miles from you now, over. Okay, thank you. Eleven Houston, the PTC looks uh, great to us. Over. Okay, do you have any idea what happened to the previous one? We have absolutely no idea. Over. Okay. Did it look like it was all right, and then just all of a sudden start uh, diverging? Uh, that's negative. Uh, if you look at the plot, which we'll save for you and let you see it uh, post-flight, 
it's got it started off immediately on the first rev and uh, just spiraled out to about oh uh, 20 to 20 degrees in pitch and then uh, it it seemed to be setting up a a spiral around an offset uh, pitch point of about uh, 20 degrees off from uh, 90 degrees uh, but we didn't want to take a chance that it would uh, would become stable at that point. Uh, we thought it might diverge, so we called you and uh, started over again. Over. Okay, no complaints. I was just curious as to what had happened. 